come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> Hey, thanks for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast, a podcast that comes at you every week where we review a movie that's chosen round robin by one of the group, and then we throw it in front just to the dogs, right? We rip into it like a pack of rabbit animals. Maybe we had to grab it from the dog, (laughs) play it, and then give it back to the dogs. Mm -hmm. So you never know what you're going to get on this. We're just going to talk about it for a little while. We watched the movie. Uh, One thing that we, I guess, a little bit of housekeeping, we ask that wherever you found us, be it iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play. If you can go give us a star rating, uh, hit the subscribe button or give us a like or write a review. Uh, all of that helps us get found by other folks. Algorithms. That's what it's all and about. The whatnot. And the whatnot. So uh, also you found. can, uh, if, lost. <laughs> if you like or don't like what we do here, you can get a hold of us on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show. You can follow us on Twitter. At Sat Freak Show. You can email us. Mm. You can. It's Saturday Night Freak Show at Yahoo.com. Holly at StellaArtois.com. <laughs> and you can follow us on Instagram, Saturday Night Freak Show. Who are these internet radio superstars? Holly. Sean. Michaela. And I'm Colin. And tonight we watch the movie that was chosen by... Michaela. And that's the only one I'll know because I don't know who's next week. <laughs> <laughs> you got an hour to it's, figure it out. <laughs> Jesus, it better not be me. No, I'm end of the line, remember. <laughs> I'm the last in the rotation. Okay. He'll work it out. Gotcha. Uh, so, Michaela, what did we watch tonight? Scream 4. Scream 4. Scream 4. Scream 4. Watch <laughs> it's Scream 4. So this is where we have to direct you back to our Scream 2 episode, which we also did. What year it does... It sounded like French. Scream 4. Scream 4. Ah, we are going to watch the Scream 4. Yes, technically the A in that's Scream is the 4. That sounded Mexican. <laughs> Is, I'm, sorry. I'm sorry. What, go ahead. <laughs> no, you're good. Uh, what's Sean drinking tonight? What is Sean drinking uh, oh, tonight? Oh, just uh, rum and coke. All right. That's the Black Roberts uh, rum that you got going on. Say yes. the brand the name, so they'll sponsor The cheapest brand us. you can find. Yep. Yeah, don't say that. Say it's the greatest, so they'll sponsor us. It's the greatest, cheapest brand you can find. <laughs> <laughs> Michaela's got a... Uh, uh, St. Adam's Oktoberfest. All right. And what's Colin drinking? I'm sitting here with a Shiner Bach. As always, oh. sponsored by Shiner Bach. Shiner we haven't done the sponsored by in a while. I know, yeah. Uh, so it's what like year, what year was, uh, was uh, Scream 4 made? 2011. And who made it? Wes Craven, his last film. This is his last Aww. movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, it was either going to be, you know, My Soul to Ooh. Take or uh, Scream 4. Which one would you rather? Scream have? 4, definitely. There you go. Oh, yep. I yep. <laughs> I was going to make a really... A the, tasteless a joke? Tasteless do it. No, joke. do it. Do it. I want to hear it. I was going to say, so while he was making this, the brain cancer was... Take it back, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, for all we know, yeah, probably. I mean, probably. Yeah. May he rest in peace. Yeah. I don't mean to make mm-hmm. fun of Wes Craven or anybody who has brain cancer. Mm-hmm. Um, I love Wes Craven and all people who have brain cancer. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Uh, I remember oh, trivia brain cancer now? on this movie. This was the first time that Wes Craven was ever pulled over and given a ticket for speeding in his life. Really? <laughs> really? <laughs> I followed him on Twitter. Yeah, he huh. was an avid uh, he was. bird watcher. He was. Like that's like all he would talk about on Twitter was like all these birds and stuff. He, he worked would. that into the uh, the but- plot of uh, My Soul to Take, I think, like all the birds the condor yeah yeah yeah, yeah. the california did, condor right because she dressed up as a condor in that movie didn't yeah. she yeah yeah <laughs> what a weird fucking movie <laughs> uh yeah okay so scream scream four so before I'm- we're saying it's 15 years since the release of the original scream and how many years since the third movie? What the third one was two thousand. So yeah. eleven years. That's okay. a long. That's a big, time. It is big gap. Big, gap. big yeah. gap. So this gives you time in between movies to sit there and actually think about the impact of the movie series because you're past you know that that time when you're really hot and doing it for three. <laughs> hot, <laughs> hot and doing it. <laughs> Remember that time we were really hot and doing it. Uh, it's gonna be that kind uh, of show tonight. The good old uh, days. Yep. <laughs> Uh, so that was uh, so. Would you say two thousand? Yeah. So they were working ninety six. Yeah. So they were cranking them out like back. Yeah. In yeah. 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 They were doing pretty good. All right. So so Scream Four. What's the the premise here that's going to bring uh, everybody back to the fold again? It's the anniversary, and Sydney's in town promoting her new book. That's about it. 
it's a pretty weak uh, reason to get everybody together. Apparently, most of the people never left. Right. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, Gail and Dewey have made their way back to uh, Woodsboro mm-hmm. as Dewey has become the sheriff. Mm-hmm. This is after his brief stint as a security guard in, in Los Angeles. Yes. In Hollywood. Mm-hmm. In Hollywood. I mean, after everybody uh, blew up and died in that movie, I'm mm-hmm. sure he was just like, yeah, Hollywood's not for me. Was he just Hollywood like on vacation? Never for Dewey. Uh, in two, <laughs> yeah. he just kind of wandered over to the college. Well, until he came to check on Sydney. Right. Like he specifically went there to make sure she was okay. But he was still employed. As a police officer. I don't think so. I don't think was so it? either. I think he was just kind of wandering. He was kind of like a vagrant at that point. <laughs> he had like that, he had the, that like gimp, didn't he? He did. That's yeah. where he had full like arm up limp in that one. Yeah. Yeah. What the hell happened to that? Uh, did he have that in the third therapy. one? Uh, a little bit. Okay. He does have it. It goes away right. uh, slowly but surely. Physical right. therapy. Nowhere to be wonders. found in this movie, though. Nowhere to be no. found. He does run like a weirdo, but I think that's just David Arquette. <laughs> yeah. Uh. He does so. everything kind of weirdly in this movie, I would argue. Yeah. Acting. <laughs> yep. Yep. Weird. Mannerisms, All everything. This really is a getting the band back together kind of movie. I think it's like everybody, producers, writer, camera people, editors, like your whole shebang. Well, not editors. Patrick No, Lucia Patrick Lucia didn't edit this, right. unfortunately. He's off making Drive Angry or something. Yeah. No, uh, well, yeah, I guess so at that point. Oh, that's uh, fine. <laughs> that's, that, that movie turned out fun, so that, I'm fine yeah. with that. Yeah, but then yeah. we don't have Patrick Lucia editing, which maybe we could have used in this movie. Do you think it would have made a difference? I think it would have. You know, For this movie edited, needed to embrace the editing. It, it really did. did. For a guy who edited the first three movies, I would say, yeah, mm-hmm. I probably would have had an effect on this mm-hmm. movie. Yeah, the lemon bars were like a like a tertiary character in this movie because of the Christ. editing. The fucking lemon bars. I don't. I haven't heard about lemon bars that much since Game of Thrones. It was <laughs> so much fucking dialogue. <laughs> Just dumb. And, so much. And Just. so it's movie horror movie loving dialogue, right? Like every single character in this movie lives in a town where horror movies are like the spice of life. Everybody Apparently knows everything so. about them. They went from. Kind of like characters, like yeah, they like horror movies and everything, and they know sort of the trappings of it. To people who just live to watch and talk about horror movies, everyone's an That's expert. It. Everyone's an expert. And the movie itself is like a, uh, like well, I was going to say a meta deconstruct. Define meta for me, because <clears throat> it gets tossed around a lot in this movie. Yeah, I don't really know how to define it. I mean, <laughs> you kind of just know what it is or you don't. Yeah. I don't really know how to describe it. Let's see what the Let's... technical definition for meta is. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be like a bunch of uh, uh, like a bunch of information surrounding a subject, right? Uh, it mm-hmm. means about the thing itself. Self-referential? Oh, but, yeah, that's another yeah, way, that's yeah, another yeah, way yeah, of saying yeah. it, kind of, yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah. but this one takes meta this like four beyond. layers deep. Like, it just keeps going down a rabbit hole of meta and like referencing things for things back. The cold <laughs> open alone is too much. Yeah. Okay. The cold <laughs> open alone is just so many layers of the same thing on top oh of God. itself. And yeah, and they're referencing what they're doing. It's just so It's peeling an onion that never my ends. God. Just so the peeling opening, it back and it keeps going. <laughs> well the opening of Scream is like one of the most famous openings I think of horror in horror yeah. movie history, the the murder the of Scream uh, Cold Open. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then, which was done in every single uh, following subsequent Scream movie, mm-hmm. and this one does three of them in a row on top of each other. Does it? Okay, so here's what was my issue with it. It was like the third by the third time in, I'm not sure if I'm watching a movie or if this is actually happening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they're but all it's not commenting. Fun. Yeah. <laughs> well, how? Why not? Because you've already been fooled twice, and you're just like, you're like how just many get more the times fuck into it? Can we just start the movie already? <laughs> yeah. That's how it feels. Can well, we the first time the they already? do it, where they. Pull the reveal to Anna Paquin, and uh, that's the second time. Yeah, because the first time yeah. it's uh, Lily. It's, uh, oh. it's step six. Hale, yeah. Oh uh, yeah. It's step six and then step seven. But yeah. they're not. I mean, they're not. Yeah. Drew, it goes from those Drew Barrymore the, caliber. Like no. you know, you're supporting or you know the, yeah. the people who show up and get killed right away. So I'm no. like, who are these people? Yeah. Mm-hmm. But it feels like minimal. I don't know. It's just like the first time they do it, it's like, oh, that's it's kind of funny. Mm-hmm. I get what they're doing because, like you said, it's one of the most famous mm-hmm. things that this series does. Mm-hmm. And what is this series about? But kind of flipping the elements they use on their head. So they did that for the opening and then they did it again. And then, like you said, by the time you get to the third one, you're like, Are, okay, we in this? Yeah. Is this what we're doing? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. I remember the first time I saw this movie, I was like, holy shit, Anna Paquin and Kristen Bell are in this movie. Yeah. And I was yeah. like, oh, no. They, you they didn't were in see it. that coming. No. <laughs> they were they were in it because they said, "Hey, can we be in a part of this movie?" I swear, people just got roles by being like, "Hey, can I be in that?" Oh, yeah. Like that's what it feels scream. like. Yeah, yeah. Right. Like if they made as 
if they made a Scream 5 today and I was just like, this movie's going to be shit, and they're like, you want to be in it? I'd be like, fuck yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because it's Scream. Uh-huh. uh-huh. Yeah. You had to be in a Scream movie? Yeah. Hell yeah. Which is kind of, I mean, it's great that that movie has that <laughs> cultural cachet, you know? I mean, I don't know. Would you do the same thing for a Saw movie? No. Like the no, eighth one of those. Not. no. Definitely not. I mean, they, they reached Because it. they're meaner? I guess so, yeah. It reached its peak at one point, but uh, yeah, they seem... They were just never as fun. I never liked them. Yeah. I've never been a Saw fan. Well, what, it, what is it Anna Paquin's Screamers. character says in the beginning about torture? Or no, it's Lucy Hale says Lucy it. Yeah torture porn that there's no character development so you don't care what's happening to those people no that's yeah. that's Anna Paquin no yeah, but it's yeah, those, it is. well regardless no, see, of this is the problem with the way this is done it's you can't tell who's not. saying what it's, it's characters <laughs> like commenting on all the movies that have come between Scream and, and Scream I would 4. bet you money that it was the girl talking to Lucy Hale <laughs> and I'm unemployed so I need that money <laughs> I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure it was the first one yeah <laughs> Either way, I looked at Michaela because, and I was because like, the second she's one right. was Anna Paquin being. I think they like, both mention it. No, because Anna Paquin was like, "I'm sick of these stab movies. They're all the same." Is what her whole thing was. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Whereas they didn't talk about the stab movies in Lucy Hale's one because they were. In but the, the most, point, and they were in the most yeah. current one. But the point is, like when she was saying that, I looked at Michaela and I was like, "She's right." Like <laughs> that's why I hate the the, yeah. uh, the Saw movies. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So this movie is kind of, in some ways, it's Kevin Williamson's like critique of the horror genre, right? He's the guy who did the critique in 1996, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and so now he's getting a chance to critique everything that's come in the wake of Scream. But yeah. is he the right person to make that critique? Well, I don't know. That's what we're going to have to find out. I guess so. Is According he? to him, his <laughs> script got chopped to bits and edited For this to one? hell. Yes. Okay, because I know a Scream 3... Mm-hmm. Aaron he, Aaron Kruger, he yeah. said, destroyed his original draft for this movie. Well, for only, some reason, he had some. Was it Dawson's Creek, or I know he did like no, some or something. Got whatever the, uh, was it, Vampire Diaries. Yeah, mm-hmm. that was on at this point. I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, like his TV series and everything. That's what he was mm-hmm. contracted to do. So he was all busy with that stuff, so he mm-hmm. couldn't come back. And the Weinstein's were like, "We got to get this damn Scream Three out." So we yep. just had Aaron Kruger come in and Aaron rewrite. Kruger can do it. Mm-hmm. But this one's credited solely to Williamson. But you're saying you heard that. Uh, Aaron Kruger had a writing credit as well. Oh, he had an executive and producer, the, yeah. executive producer yeah. credit. And he did like polish on scenes. Mm-hmm. Polish <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> on scenes. He was called in because they yeah. took, brought him in for the third one, so they brought him in for this one too. Okay. I can tell. Mm, yep. <laughs> yeah. He's Kevin Williamson claims that this varies greatly from his original draft of the film. Mm. Well, well I mean, if he stuck around and actually, you know, did more work on these movies, aside from just being like, all right, here's a script. I have to go do 50 million other things and uh, mm-hmm. I'm not going to be around. So mm-hmm. you can't be mad if you're not going to be around to like be there and do rewrites and whatever. Mm-hmm. The yeah, that is kind of fucked up that it took like 11 years and still didn't have enough mm-hmm. time to perfect still. his mm-hmm. script. Yeah. Still. You can't hand yeah. off your baby to the babysitter <laughs> and be mad when they drop it, you know? Yeah. <laughs> So the uh, the so it's like ten minutes or so I think of screen time at least before we even settle into what the hell the movie is about. It's mm. too long because we got to get through mm-hmm. three cold opens in a row, all of them commenting on each other, all focused on the uh, popularity of the stab movie series, which yes. is the movie series within Scream that is Scream. Right. Mm-hmm. Yes. <laughs> which the first one, according to this movie, was directed by Robert Rodriguez. Oh, right. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, it gets I very that, confusing. I think that uh, that title pops up in Scream 2 as well. Does like, it? I think it's even Robert so Rodriguez continuity? in Scream 2. Yeah, okay. that's continuity. That's good. I'm pretty sure they just grabbed the old version of Stab that they were yeah. playing then and oh, were just yeah. like, pop it in. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I like that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's fun, yeah. though. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So uh, mm-hmm. many people had to die in the cold open of this. Amy T. Garden had to have her back broken by a garage door, which is mm-hmm. uh, very plausible mm-hmm. and accepted. <laughs> I'm all for that. I'm well, sure that happens. We can't go looking for logic in our horror movies. Hey, I will, we can. I will say the garage door behaved in the way garage doors do is that when it touched her, it did raise up because that's what garage doors are supposed to do. <laughs> but, in, they... but in quote unquote touching her, it <laughs> broke her in half. <laughs> no, it just, According it just to the sounds it, of this movie. It's not like it chopped her in half. Like That's where I thought it was going to go or the first time I saw this movie is like if this garage door cuts this bitch in half I'm like already done with this movie but, it's, but it just like it's, crushed her a little bit and then went up you know but the thing like it crushed her that's the part I'm having a problem with yeah. that it crushed her well, she there was, already that got there was no motion sensor that stopped the door to begin with anything yeah, yeah, yeah I don't think and I've never been under a garage door when it's coming down 
Because again, never motion, you've never heard that happen. No, not not in this position where I'm like laying oh. there and it's going to uh, kill me, quote unquote. That's because the is motion the, sensor would go off. Exactly. Well, that's <laughs> one point one point two. I don't think they're strong enough to like do that. Yeah, it depends. I don't oh, know. again, I don't I, know. Uh, when I was a kid, we had a garage door that we had a garage that got hit by lightning, so the garage door didn't work properly. Yeah, you can't lift those uh, fucking things up. Somewhere. No, and uh, it did not have a sensor that would detect, so you had to like duck out real quick or mm. just be away from the garage door when it would come down. So that was a great fear of mine that I would be crushed by that garage yeah. door at some point in my yeah, life. This movie's for you, man. Yeah. <laughs> so she gets paralyzed yeah. by the garage door. Well, she's not I even mean, she the... wasn't moving anyway after getting stabbed in the back. Yeah. She was yeah. done. Yeah. Yep. But she's not even the focus of our, our film. We're no. bringing back, so we have to come up with a way, the filmmakers, to bring back all the people you love from the original Scream movies, which is basically three people, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Three uh, people on the DVD video box cover here. The people yes. that lived. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Basically. Sydney, yeah. Dewey, and Gail. And so we're going to bring them all back. covered up by a sticker. <clears throat> Who are you? But we also have to introduce like an entire roster of new characters. Oh, I think it's it's uh, uh, Pen- Hayden Panettiere. Oh, which um, oh, Sean is sense. severely bothered by because he, this is like <laughs> one of Sean's least favorite movie tropes ever: the invented cousin. Oh, I don't. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh, that's yep. my. That's one of the uh, out of the many no, problems I, I have I with agree this movie. That it's, yeah. I don't. The invented family that yeah. is only there, okay. and especially well, wait, because. Tell us about what are you talking about. Well, all right. So uh, it's uh, um, Sydney's cousin. What's her name? Jill. Jill. Yep. Jill. Emma Roberts. Is Emma Roberts yeah. is Jill, and her aunt Mary is it? McDonald. Yeah, her aunt Mary yeah. McDonald. So <laughs> she has an aunt. Eight. Mm, I don't know. Well, basically, you're saying that these characters were never mentioned over the course of three other movies. Nope. That Sydney never. never had an extended family at all. Never. Mm-hmm. And now it's like, poof, here you go. Here you go. Family, which who are, I mean, with the way this movie goes, are invented to die and be the killer. Like, that is mm-hmm. that is their sole purpose in this. Yeah, the thing is, like, if in a movie, obviously, most main characters, their extended family's not going to be mentioned. Like, any given movie, you're not sure. going to find out their aunts and uncles and shit. Right. But it is kind of fucking annoying when it's invented just to bring back for a movie like that. It's yeah. really annoying. To do to do what they did with the characters in this movie yeah. is what pisses me off. You can bring in family, that's fine, but for the character of Sydney, like that doesn't work. That doesn't jive for me. Maybe mm-hmm. it works for everybody else, but it doesn't jive for oh, me. Oh, it, it doesn't work in any horror context, I would argue, because uh, spoilers for 2016... Blair Witch um, <laughs> countdown right now. Skip ahead. Um, I, it's not really a spoiler because it's literally the cold open of the movie. But uh, the, they invent a, a brother for yeah. Heather and Blair Witch to the, that's going to look for her, mm-hmm. and like that's the that sets up the whole premise of that movie. And that one, that that is, I mean, it's not the biggest failure of that movie, but it is. But it's a big one. It's a huge failure. Yeah, it's well, anyone, it's so poorly done. That remembers fucking Dawn from Buffy. Yeah. Oh Jesus God. Christ. Yeah, that's right. That was I forgot bullshit. About that. Yep. Yeah. Invented family is the <laughs> oh, worst. Oh, you've offended Colin. Are you that serious? Was great how they did that. That was bullshit. <laughs> she was like mm-hmm. written in. Oh, that Buffy was so. Time. That was so uh, annoying. Long lost family members are the worst. Yeah. yeah. I don't like them. Mm-hmm. I don't like them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but that is the setup of this, right? That we're gonna have like a whole. So, and maybe I don't know. Is this one of the movie sh- shortcomings? And this is maybe something that shares with Scream Three. If Scream is about Sydney Prescott. Uh-huh. Scream 3 and Scream 4, she's kind of like a supporting character in her own movie, true or false. Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, she's not the one. yes. Like, there's a lot of focus on her because the idea is that the killer wants to get at Sydney in Scream 3 and in Scream 4. Well, I suppose in all of them, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, But it's going to be because of the attention on her. All these other people are kind of moving around, you know, yes. on the chessboard, mm-hmm. and the yes. killer's picking them off one by one, and so we can keep Sydney alive for the final confrontation. Yes, but it's like other than that, she really doesn't have anything to do, and maybe this yeah. is why you invent a family for her because mm-hmm. it's like we're kind of tapped out on her. She went to ho- so. she went to college and became an actress. Went to Hollywood. She was an actress in three. Yeah, nope. They were just making the movie, the stab movie about yeah. her life. 
What was she? She was a writer. She was like a recluse or something. No, she's up in the she's up in the mountains <laughs> hiding out. She's a, um, a hotline being haunted by her mother. Being haunted by her mother. Yeah. She's a, a women's crisis hotline. Oh right, right operator. Right, right, okay. Yeah, because yeah. um, for someone who's going to need lifelong therapy, why not be a therapist for someone else? Right? You know. I mean, you she's starting her road to recovery. <laughs> I mean, those who can't do teach. So. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I will say though, in Scream Three, and this is be my defense. Here we it, go. Uh, <laughs> is that we get the uh, the lovely Scooby Doo version. Of Scream in that movie because it feels to me like a, like a, a Scooby Doo mystery with all those characters running around, yeah. Especially with like Parker Posey, yeah. Who I think is great in that movie. Um, with all those just characters running around trying to fix, she oh, come on, it's fun to watch her. Said that about Parker Posey. She's, she's having the time of her life playing in that movie. Maybe nobody else is, but she's having fun. She's always she's always Parker Posey. Yeah, she's Parker much. Posey. She's always yeah. Parker Posey. But they get to go and solve a mystery. It's a Hollywood mystery. Mm-hmm. And it's a movie set in Hollywood, so I know that already like puts it on the side of things that I will like. It's Scream and it's set in Hollywood. I know. It's in. like Michelle they made it just for in. me, which uh, maybe is, they did. Is Parker Posey like the main character of that movie now? I can't remember. Because no. Sydney's what's like, the last time you watched well, this? Because Sydney's barely in it. She's hanging out in the fucking, you know, mountains. Yeah, she's in the mountains. And yeah, everything. and I'm, I'm here for Sydney. That's why I'm, yeah. I've come to these movies. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. And, then, and that's the thing with this movie that confuses the shit out of me. I can't tell who's the main character. It, yeah. Bother, yeah, it bothers me like to no end. Because like for a while they kind of make it seem like it's Hayden Penetier's character, and then yeah, they make it kind like, of Jill. Emma Roberts kind of is Sydney, so like in the background of this movie, though. Like, but for a little bit, you think it's Jill, mm-hmm. and then it switches to mm-hmm. Kurt. Is it Kirby? Is that her name? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Hayden Panet- And mm-hmm. sometimes it's Sydney. Like I can't tell who the main character is in mm-hmm. this movie. Yeah, because you yep. have to. You're in a situation where it's like if you're because I was actually surprised at the amount of screen time that um, Courtney Cox. And too uh, much. And too do, I mean, much. but they had like, I mean, I guess it's, I'm looking at it from like the business side of, you know, you're coming back into this movie. Well, on the last one, I didn't have enough to do or whatever. And like, okay, so we're going to write like a part and you're going to have like, you know, some good scenes to yourself mm-hmm. or whatever that you're going to be able to do. All of them get these moments, you know, but they didn't do like a Force Awakens kind of thing, which it feels like maybe they were trying to, they where it's like have. a new group of people. And the kind of elder group that's handing off over the reins of that's the, what they should have done. That sounds so beautiful the way you describe yeah. it, like a Force Awakens version of Scream Four. I mean, that's, that's what so they're amazing. trying to do, yeah, but they don't pull it off. But I, if that's what they're trying to do, I don't need fucking Courtney Cox and David Arquette arguing about like him sort of not really flirting with his female partner. Yeah, I don't there's need so any much of this. that. There's oh, why is that a B story in this movie? I don't, I don't they're care. They're trying to make them still like the big, you know, like mar- marital bickering. Trying to make them endearing, but I don't think it comes off that way. No, like, I was it's so it makes, bitter. Makes Dewey bitter. Yeah. It makes Dewey makes her bitter. Makes Dewey look like an idiot. Yeah, because he's movie, a bumbling well, idiot. Just makes him movie. look like an idiot. Yeah, which is not. I mean, Dewey was never like the most on top of everything, but he was. He was. Trying and uh, doing some stuff in the other movies, and this one he's just a well. He was he was moron. funny, like he was the comic relief, but he also ha- brought some of the unexpected. That first movie, I thought, like you know the the warmth to it, yeah. you know, it was oh, yeah. like Dude, this is the warmth. Yeah, I thought he was going to be the stock character, but it yeah. turned out, you know, like and then he you know ended up getting the girl. It was like this is fantastic, yeah. <laughs> and they kind of explore that a little more in the second one. But by this one, it's like. Okay, like what he really doesn't have any like really humorous winning humorous moments. No, this movie makes me think he struggles tying his shoes. You know, like mm-hmm. they make him that stupid that he's like the sheriff they really don't. Yeah, <laughs> the I'm, sheriff I'm like, of this town. I'm like, oh god, he shouldn't have a gun. Like that's how I feel about him. In I this like movie. to imagine that there's like there's a real sheriff wandering around somewhere. They're like, yeah, you could be sheriff Dewey. It's yeah. okay. Yeah. 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 You he's, you know, he's, he's, he's doofy. He, he, that's what I was gonna say. He's, he's doofy he's now. Scary movie version. He is. He is. Yeah. He, they turned him. He's into really Doofy. is. God damn it. Fucking hell. That and they took away his Broken Arrow theme, which really disappointed mm-hmm. me. Yeah. His very... Broken Arrow theme. Yeah, the theme from Broken Arrow is uh, Dewey's theme. Oh, yeah? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was. Uh, I think they brought it along in Scream 2. That was his scratch track. You remember the theme? Oh, the Broken yeah, Arrow? Yeah, 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 yeah. No, it was, it was very yeah. like, sh- there's a new sheriff in town. Like, it was yeah, very. There was, there was a tiny hint of it, but they just got rid of the whole theme for this movie. It was, it was very like, like, like gone. Western hero. Music wise, it's uh, kind of awesome. They didn't musically. Uh, there was a couple of scenes where uh, 
uh, when they show shots of the front of the high school and everything, yeah. they are the, yeah, the crash kind of sounds. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Make, it's Marco Beltran. Yeah. yeah. You know what I actually thought? Like when the when the movie first, so after the three cold opens and like when Sydney's pulling up out in front of the town square or whatever and they're yeah. playing this like, you know, 2011 uh-huh. uh, pop tune. Who was it? Like Kesha or something? I don't know. But it was like. <laughs> it's the only one he knows. <laughs> I didn't recognize it. I know. I didn't recognize it. Been, no. <laughs> But it was very like, oh, okay, that's right. We're making a scream movie, and this is what you do at a scream movie. You have to have that kind of, uh, you know, yeah. the, 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 it just the, wasn't killer '90s music. Anymore. I know, <laughs> unfortunately. Yeah. God damn it. Yeah, where was uh, the? Well, that wasn't even Nick Cave's red right hand. In no, the no, it wasn't in this movie. movie. It was they not missed, in this movie. They didn't do a bunch of stuff, unfortunately. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <sighs> yeah, yeah, dear, yeah, listener. In Nick case you Cave. can't tell, this is our, our. Uh, official Festivus episode because we're going to be airing our grievances all night. <laughs> and as uh, Frank Costanza once said, I got a lot of problems with you people and you're going to hear about it. <laughs> it's true. And we say that looking directly at the box <laughs> yeah, art of true. this. It was just so disappointing because when they'd play that like that music outside of the high school, there's like glimmers of like the old scream. Right? Like they're trying so it'd hard. get my hopes up we're and I'm almost like, there. Oh, you're so close. <laughs> so close. <laughs> Yet so far away. So far away. There's so much fucking dialogue in this movie. And a lot of people cannot hate it. Like, okay, I I mean, Holly, you and I are both people that grew up on, like, Kevin Williamson stuff. Yeah. And, like, I now, like, especially watching Scream 4 recently as an adult and watching some other Kevin Williams stuff, I realize how lucky he struck with the people on Dawson's Creek and how good they were able at handling his dialogue. Like, some of the people in this movie cannot fucking handle Kevin Williamson dialogue. Like, they just stumble over the words and it's comes out terrible. Because like, I mean, if it's, it's done, just, if it's done right, mm-hmm. I enjoy a dialogue heavy movie. Yeah, I really do. But in this, God I'm bless just you, like, Aaron yeah, right, yes. But in this, I'm just like, shut the fuck up. Mm-hmm. Like, if you're gonna stab somebody, stab somebody. It's mm-hmm. getting fucking and they're, annoying. And they're just saying stupid things. So yeah. stupid. It's like, oh boy, get, get the, what, what's going on here? We're talking yeah, about not the, quick. No one is the character quick. or the killer. Both. Uh, yeah. I feel like killer across the things. board, there are yeah. people bad with the dialogue yeah. in this yeah. movie. Yeah, it, in every role, like... there are people that cannot handle the Kevin Williamson like speech pattern. You know that, like, like I don't know. Like, it's weird to think that like these inexperienced kids on Dawson's Creek could handle the dialogue better than people in this movie that are mm. established actors. You know, like I don't think Anthony Perkins or Anthony Perkins. God, this is his character's That's... name. Anthony Anderson can <laughs> handle it very well. Adam Brody can't really handle it very well either, which is weird because it's not a huge departure from the oh, OC. Like Adam the Brody's, OC was like yeah, monologue snapping. Not to mention constantly. his guest stint on Gilmore Girls. Gilmore Girls, yeah, yeah, exactly. My other problem with this movie, Anthony Anderson, who starred in a couple scary movie things. Right? They like they're going back around and just yeah. like everything that was farce is yeah. now the real thing. Yeah. Like they're they're mm-hmm. flipping everything. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, um, Emma Roberts. I was. I thought was oh especially bad with the Kevin Williamson dialogue. I fucking just, hate Emma Roberts. She just. What do you have against poor I Emma Roberts? Her. First of all, she's not poor. She's uh, yeah. <laughs> she, first she's, she's a Roberts. Poor. Yeah, she's, she's just sucks fine. Ass. She's doing. And she domestically abused her. She domestically here. abused her boyfriend, so she can yeah. suck oh, it. She? Yeah, she got she arrested did. for domestic violence. Oh, she yeah. should yep. suck it. Yep, she broke his she's nose. She's a fucking bitch. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah. well, I don't know. And she's well, a terrible so. actress. <laughs> well, and, you know, oh, I, well, maybe oh, he deserved oh, it. Oh, that's okay. too didn't. harsh. No, didn't he? No. I mean, I don't know. I'm just saying. I don't think she's a terrible actress, though. I have seen her in several things where so she's always playing a bitch, and she does seem to have resting bitch face. So it's like that maybe is the impression that you get off from it. I'm like, it, you know, it's like she, she was, was a good Nancy I Drew, believed her good? in this movie. You know, it's like that was the thing. I was like. The first time around, I think when I watched it, I just fucking hated her character. And now I'm yeah. like, oh, but they're trying to do that. But if she's supposed to be the next Sydney, like she doesn't even come close to like no. to being that. But like, even Sydney doesn't come close to being Sydney. Like she's missing the spunk or the no, the, the pluckiness like, of Sydney. Like this, you know. Now Campbell has like Campbell. such an endearing quality about her, yeah. and Emma Roberts does not have that at all. No. Like I've seen her in American Horror Story. I've seen Scream Queens. Yeah. I don't like her in any of it. Like mm-hmm. it's just, and those are all. Very, I don't understand why she is a scream queen currently. I really don't because I think she this is not what she's good at. And if you if you read anything about fandoms, you read about how horrible she is to like actual people. I'm sure oh, that sucks. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, well, she's she horrible from Hollywood to me royalty. In this movie. <laughs> you know who's good though? Aiden <laughs> Panettiere. Hannah. Why isn't she Hayden in more stuff? Panettiere. Panettiere. Yeah, I like her. I liked her, I liked her in, in this, this movie. I love yeah. her in this. She's. In a different movie than everybody else. She is. should have she been is. Emma Roberts' role. She should have been the Absolutely. new, the new I, Sydney. Yeah. 
Is I'll she what? She's on Nashville now? Is yeah. that what she's doing? That's yeah. why we haven't seen yeah. any more movies with her in it? Yeah. Because she's she was really on good. She's good. Yeah, I remember. She's on yeah. 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 Save the Cheerleader, yeah. Save the yeah. World. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But yeah, she has like a qual. But ironically, she should be a scream queen. Yeah, that would she be good. Should. She's in a mm-hmm. video game called Until Dawn. And you guys she, should yeah. check out that. Um, she's but, incredible in that. Nice. Yeah. So there's her scream mm-hmm. queen, second mm-hmm. uh, scream queen cred. So we like you, Hayden Pant. She's so cute. Yeah. She looks like Tinkerbell. Mm-hmm. The little hands. Yeah, <laughs> small little, little tiny hands. hands. Tiny but little hands. But you know hands. what the the ironic thing is here? It's like I remembered that she was in the movie, but I thought she was out of it earlier. I was actually surprised this time around watching it. I'm like, holy shit, she survives a while. Why don't I remember? You know any of these key scenes, and I wonder if this is the maybe the part the one of the problems with Scream Four. When you look back on the other Scream movies, there are these moment maybe suspense moments or set pieces that you can pick out of the previous movies. Mm-hmm. What was your memory of Scream Four that you know you're like, <coughs> oh, I remember that there's a party in a bar, and I don't remember what yeah. happens there. Yeah, I remember that it ends in a, um, a hospital, but yeah. I don't remember the exact dynamics of what goes on. What other like memorable moments? When Olivia gets killed because like that whole room, like even the ceiling is covered in blood, and like the intestines are out on her bed. Pretty, I always remember that part because it's pretty hardcore. It's pretty gory, yeah. Mm-hmm. That part always stuck out to me. But yeah. They just didn't hang on it long like enough. The, um, you know what I'm saying? We like get the, theater scenes in Scream 2. Mm-hmm. We well, get... the, the scene in the car where they have to crawl over the guy. Yeah. Like, you know, yeah. The scene suspense in the audio scene, booth. You know, There's it's like... no suspense scenes in this movie. None. 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 Shit. No, there's <laughs> none. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I never thought about that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There's no suspense really? scenes in this movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I thought no, about was, that while I was bored during the movie. <laughs> I was just like, why, why? There's no, there's nothing. Either the killer's like, and I wouldn't count the, the what's her name? Brie. Allison Brie. Allison Brie. Allison Brie. There it is. I'm like, Brie Larson. Oh, that's not oh, it. Nope. The long that's not, scene yeah. In the, yeah. Long, the reshot the scene. The, yeah, they're just like, you we need yeah. more to do here. The Let's, scene that is almost exactly like the parking lot, yeah, or the just, parking <laughs> garage scene in Cursed, yeah. the other Kevin okay. Williams and Wes Craven movie we'll I picked up. this year. Ooh. Literally, yeah. literally, I had already forgotten she was in this until you just talked about yeah. it. <laughs> Allison Brie. Yeah. Not, uh, and she's a good actress, too, so that's what a waste. What a waste. She's been in better things. Yeah. Yeah, what a waste of her. Yeah, she's yeah. better things. Yeah. Again, I feel like she was like, scream? Fuck yeah, I'll do it. Whatever. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, why I, don't, I don't blame her. shows up for yeah. it. Yeah. Because yeah. <clears throat> it can make careers, you know? Mm-hmm. There's also a Culkin in this movie. There is a Culkin. Rory? Yes. Uh, yeah. Rory, Rory Culkin. Culkin. Um, his long being probably hair. what you would expect. <laughs> it's not good. No, he's not great. And that other guy with him no, that is very forgettable school, is not good none either. None of the high school boys were, no. No. Well, this is one of the mm. creepy things. Is, well, the creepy. It's one of those things that like immediately dates your movie when you have uh, technology on display. And these yeah. movies, I guess, are predicated on the use of cordless phones. And at this point, cordless it's like cordless phones. Is it cell true. phones? There's a lot of people using cell phones. Around by 2011. Yeah. yeah, but you know the guy with the fucking headset with the microphone yeah. or the camera oh, on the it. The fucking GoPro. Yeah, they're doing all this stuff. Like, <laughs> oh yeah, everybody's. I mean, I guess this everybody's is everybody's got the, their iPhone 3G. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they are iPhone 3G. Oh so my god, yeah. Oh my god, we got 3G in a phone. Yeah, sweet. We were on the third generation of iPhones oh at that my point. God. Wow, yeah. And then the, the the surveillance in the barn. Yeah, those like, gigantic, gigantic cameras, cameras. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, the, and the little webcam. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah that yeah, she yeah. thought she could just put some straw over and no one would see it. Yeah. This is another movie on the just the blinding edge of technology. <laughs> <laughs> Why where do they keep are. doing that? No, it's like, I mean, I guess at the time it does come out, it's like, you know, whoa, this is, you know, it's happening right now. Right. But, well, but it was such an advancement in those years, like that, like six months later, yeah. that shit looks bad yeah. at well, that time. And, and like, a, you know, we were talking about the 2016 Blair Witch earlier, mm. but that has that same problem. They have those little tiny, like, cameras that they're wearing they on their head in that cameras. movie, too. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. they're going to have the exact same problem. So, yeah. so you've, you're relating those two movies so much. There's a there's a lot of parallels between <laughs> there them. There are. I never thought I'd be able to do that. I'd be yeah. like, oh, that's why I hate both of them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we knew that, uh, you know, at some point, you know, Holly was saying she was bored during this movie. It's like, mm-hmm. uh, we knew that that had happened because. All of a sudden, conversation turned while the movie's oh on. Oh my god! Turns to like 
They live in such beautiful houses. Look at these houses. They do. God, their houses have to be like 3,000 square feet They're or something gorgeous. insane like that. They're huge. And They're they all have giant wraparound awesome. porches. Yeah. And on, like, the bal- on the second floor. Yeah. 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 Gorgeous. <laughs> that, and that was just a roof. <laughs> when, didn't they go out on the... It was well, like a fenced in... Yeah. Yeah. When oh, um, Amy T. Garden was... was what was she yeah. running yeah. across when she went to her garage? That was super... Okay, Amy T. Garden's house, I do not understand at all. Yes, because she... She runs, no, construction. It's she weird. runs yeah. upstairs to the second floor, which she goes out a door, which goes down a staircase to the garage. Yeah, but she ran across like a what looked like a balcony that was yes. really long and narrow yeah. to yes. the garage. Yeah. That's at, what I didn't understand. At first I thought it was an attic, and yeah. then she kept going. I was like, oh, it's not. The it's geography still, it's of going. this movie is fucked. Because <laughs> <laughs> even when we get to the final scene in Kirby's house, it's fucked. It's so fucked. Characters yeah. going into disappearing into rooms, coming back, all yeah. for the, like, let's make everyone a red herring so they have to leave and come in the mm-hmm. rooms at different odd times. But that yep. kitchen island. Mm. Huge. It was. See, a, it I was can't huge. even get past it. I can't even get past it. We have gone meta in the podcast because the conversation has come back to here, and I can't get past it. Uh, okay, still the houses. That kitchen island was like as big as a fucking dinner table. Oh my God, life is folding bigger, in on me. Like, yep. It was bigger than a kitchen table. And not only, not only did we talk about the houses, but we got yeah. real deep. How does she effect. run in those shoes? That was well, Sean. That was Sean. That was well, Sean. That's been a major uh, issue of contention for me because I know I've. Read that she had to wear shoes to be taller, like the rest of the cast, because she's very short, like five foot four, five foot two, I think. Mm-hmm. She's a very small person. But the audio of the shoes clunking around in that last part of the scene always, I'm just like, what the fuck is going on? And then she's got like five foot lifts on those things. I'm yeah. like, how did you run around and kill people in those yeah. things? It's not possible. Yeah. I'm looking at the the realities of killing people, Colin. So, so <laughs> it don't make sense. So were you saying the foley work was probably not so great on I wasn't that either? A fan of the foley work in the so movie. So let's we'll we'll keep that on our list of people on the crew that were asleep at the wheel because foley so. work was number one. We'll get to the other ones later. Yeah, but backs we, breaking, shoes running around. Yeah, we were also talking. Holly and I also got into a deep conversation about the unrealistic nature of Hayden Panettiere wearing a blazer in high school mm-hmm. with mm-hmm. shoulder pads. Yeah, like she's very, <laughs> hey, she's very cool. You don't no, like, she's not a she's, she's not a career woman. She, she's, she's not going to a job fair at school. Like, but but and it's like it's like a good what half of the movie she's wearing a blazer. Yeah, like it's, it's a long time. Okay, and that brings up a question I have because I noticed because I noticed the lack of outfit changes in this movie. Yeah. So how many days does this movie take oh, yeah. place over? Now that you say that, mm-hmm. like, like two, like two to three, looks the same in every scene. She's like only, two like days, two maybe maybe three, max. maybe three. Yeah. Yeah. She never changes her hair. No, exactly. Never changes her jacket. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's a big problem. Hmm. Yeah. And yeah. that's that, and they pick something distinct like a fucking blazer to put on her when the movie only takes place over like 2 yeah, or 3 or days. A, yeah. A giant striped shirt on Emma yeah. Roberts. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I don't know any high schoolers that wore blazers voluntarily. <laughs> if you didn't have a school yeah. uniform, you weren't wearing fucking blazers to school. No, I I will tell you this as soon as I got to college, I had like four. <laughs> yeah. But you, you, this is high school. Hey, Pants here's got more blazers than I do. Yeah. <laughs> I don't have yeah. any. <laughs> Yeah, God. not in high school. No blazers. Nope. No. So wardrobe. Wardrobe. Yeah, wardrobe. Foley. Okay. Foley. <laughs> we're getting into the nitty gritty on this one. No, no, no. Design. Next no. we're talking uh, about the prop, prop master. master. <laughs> prop master. Okay, fuck all the right, prop right. master on this movie. Set back. I'm going to give credit to, but I'll tell you about that later. <laughs> Prop master, fuck, fuck the prop master in this movie for one reason alone. Bring home groceries, and she has an open box of Honey Nut Cheerios. <laughs> an open box. Sticking, sticking out of a paper bag of groceries. Yeah. So it's yeah. like, we know it just got brought in. Just got brought in. Piggly Wiggly, down the street, <laughs> home. Honey Nut Cheerios is wide open. Yep. Well, Michaela was saying, you were saying all these people are animals because they're eating uh, oh. their chocolate milk okay. with their string cheese. Oh. Yeah, okay. And eating, oh. so she must have been eating out of that fucking box of cereal as she was driving home. Yeah. Here, here's the thing. Your big clue to who the killer at the end of the movie is should have been, should have been, yeah. <laughs> should have been the psycho carrying around a gallon of chocolate milk and eating string cheese yep. and drinking the chocolate milk straight out of the fucking gallon jug God, while you string cheese. I wish that was cheese. a thing with these movies that if we went back and watch them we'd see the killers <laughs> eating crazy shit that would be great that's your tip off yeah. that tip all right yeah. put that down for the one that we make right that's yeah gonna yeah, be yeah. Right. yeah. yeah. so prop shit. master fully yeah. artist wardrobe they're those, all slacking oh those dairies do not let's make. talk no. about the continuity person also because there was at least oh, a couple yeah. of times when somebody had an object in their hand that it cut to another scene and, and they grabbed the object from somebody, oh, from somebody no. else yeah. oh no uh, that's the worst uh, yeah. i hate that the knife was in her hand man but are we saying that 
uh, Wes Craven was asleep at the wheel. Okay, we're not going to make any jokes about it. No, 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 no. no, no. Not Wes Craven. I think that it was everybody else. I don't think (laughs) this was the wrong. I don't know. It just felt like the wrong time and the wrong people to make this movie. Well, he had to do it, I assume, because he was able to go off and do something he actually wanted to do. I'm sure. Which was my soul to take. Yeah. Right? Because before that, his last movie was Cursed? No. Was it no. Uh, 20, uh, Red Red t- No, Red, 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 red Eye. eye. Red Eye. Oh, red shut up. Red Eye. Yeah. Movie. What? Was that the movie? Red Eye's Red Eye's good. That's a nice. That's a. Gillian Murphy is yeah, really nice, good in that movie. Yeah. That's I a like real red quick, eye. nice suspense movie. I like, like Red Eye. In and out, get it done and go yeah. home. That was yeah. a good one. Solid movie. And then it was but, like years, I think, until he did yeah. My Soul to Take, which is something he wrote and directed. Yeah. Which I is why did. I think at some point we got to do a double feature of Shocker and My Soul to Take. We might I think to. those are like the two most personal Wes Craven movies. I just didn't really did. Um, we might, yeah, we might have to get there. back into those. It was Red Eye, then Cursed, and then it was he did a segment uh, in Paris Je Tam. Red that, like, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I saw that. Yep. Wow. Really? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and the curse wow. like wow. fucking broke, so. that broke his like spirit. No. I yep. think like, I two probably because Red cursed. Eye doesn't feel dated. That's the thing. It, they no, were it they were yeah. a matter of less than a year apart. So wow. Is that Rachel McAdams? Yeah, and mm-hmm. Killian Murphy. Yep. yep. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, for Red Eye doesn't feel dated. It's no. Cursed feels like it was very fucking... dated. How <laughs> was Red Eye before uh, Cursed? Yeah. I know. Jesus. Yeah. That's crazy. I, and you're right. Cursed probably broke his spirit. Mm-hmm. Well, I think this is also, but it. maybe this is a Kevin Williamson thing. Maybe like he is one of these writers who's able to capture the moment, the essence, the moment of yep. right now. Well, at least there was for was like that able to period in the mid to late nineties, and, and they wanted him to do it again. I think, and I don't think he was quite able to do it. For this movie, but I mean, because like, what what do we think he's trying to say with this movie? Well, maybe the, to, to to talk about this, maybe we should go to motive of the killers. Mm-hmm. Oh motive my god, because there yeah. are the right. the scream thing. You have Fucking two killers, motive. two killers in every movie. Nope. Yeah, nope. scream three had scream three one. only had one Roman. Okay, so there's two killers. So one of them is uh, Rory Culk in the uh, the AV club, or he's a cinema club, he's cinema club uh, guy. So he's yeah. the one who knows everything about horror movies. Of yeah. course. But they have no taste, judging by the posters hanging in their cinema yeah, club. No. Yeah, they're all... Uh, was there an H2O poster, right? No, H2. Because H- that was a uh, Dimension Halloween. Films. Rob, yeah, so Rob Zombie. And yeah. Feast. And West Feast. Craven yep. Connection. It was also Kirby, Dimension. Right? on the other hand, has a Tremors poster in her room, so that she just had, adds ups yeah. it for me, for her. That's the problem with this movie, is that like everyone, like it's like we said before, everyone's a horror expert, because didn't Emma Roberts have an American Werewolf yes, London poster? And like that, the old yeah. school one. Like yeah. the yeah. old yeah, 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 yeah. And old Kirby had the rear window. So yeah. 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 This is how I was able to tell their rooms apart, yeah. Yeah. based on which movies, which Nobody, <laughs> classic sorry, films they like. There's like one person out of a group that likes movies. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Not everyone. Much. Not yeah. everyone. But like, this is the dream world yeah, yeah, that Kevin no, Williams so. has, has gifted us with. They're, like, tr- they're <laughs> trying. They're trying to do the whole like the, the town the dreaded sundown, where the whole town just gets into it. Mm-hmm. That's what mm-hmm. they're trying to do. Mm-hmm. I don't believe it. No, I have, I have not I had that either. experience where all, all my that... friends are as interested in the same <laughs> shit as I am, yeah. or experts on it. Like yeah. we can, we Even come the from cops, different the like cops. levels and come together to do this. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like for us all to be like together in a high school would just like, imagine how the world awesome would that would be. It would have been yeah. great. Yeah, high school but... would have been so much more bearable. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> but yeah, and not only that, but if they are that much of experts on this, shouldn't they have seen this all coming? Like if they're so smart, shouldn't they have been able to just outsmart? Everything that happened in this well, movie. Well, these are new the, rules. the super new rules, experts. Michaela. They yeah. say it in the new movie decade, and new the tagline yeah. on the poster. New decade, new rules. Yeah. So he's teamed Jesus. up with Emma Roberts, right? Okay. So this is what, these are the two characters. This is Sydney's cousin and uh, and the Kieran, the Culkin kid. Rory. 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 And so they, uh, their motive is that they are, they're remaking the, the, so the idea of the original movie is like they were just, you know, inspired by scary movies and using, we have no motive. That's what makes us scary, right? Mm-hmm. And by the time you get to this one, it's we're so we're so celebrity obsessed because the whole movie does seem to have this thing about it's obsessed with the or focusing on the celebrity culture that comes from uh, true crime, you know, surviving a true crime incident. The movies that are made based on it, right? The books that are written about it, being famous for like being a part of. Uh, something that happens to you, like not actively. It doesn't feel like they're, they're actively doing something to become famous. It's like incidental. Yeah, becoming incidental a professional fame. victim. That's right. what yeah. she right. aspires incidental to. Incidental fame, <laughs> professional victim. It, yeah. yeah, it yeah. doesn't even seem like it's necessarily a commentary on people who make it a hobby to like t- 
to have a, they have an interest in true crime and that sort of thing. It's literally just these kids that want to get famous for doing nothing. For doing nothing. And the yeah. best way to do that is to survive a, you know, yeah. or, you know whatever, be a, I suppose, a victim but is what she says. I think the problem <clears throat> is, is that Wes Craven is... Seen. Well, this is what Kevin Williamson. Well, Kevin Williamson, yeah. I'm sorry, not Wes Craven, I'm sorry. Uh, Kevin Williamson is seeing this, but the audience that he wants to go see this movie are the ones he's making a comment on and they don't like the commentary he's cuz he's talking about them at this point I think well I got the comment this is, on the audience who's yeah, supposed to be going is, to see this movie yeah, and they don't like it yeah this yeah. is like I think that's why old this movie man, failed old man yeah. Kevin Williamson yeah. Yeah. going like look at all the, they got the twitter and the facebooks and yes. they just want everything you and just don't want, want recognition yeah. you're all yes. shallow bunch yeah. of little he's brats like, he had to watch too much of the simple life yeah. He's telling his audience that this is what you are. That's they what, don't yeah. like it because they're not being told that they're the smart people. They're not. He's not talking to the horror nerds who like who know all the things about the movies yeah. and who's he's telling them you're smart for knowing this, that's, so you'll survive. He's doing exact, the opposite. That's exactly what I was thinking when she was giving her little speech about being famous. Yeah, that's exactly what I was thinking. He's he's yelling at his yeah. audience and like, no, this is no. Yeah. That's interesting. I had a completely different takeaway from it. What do you think? Um, are you guys familiar with the serial killer Luca Magnata? No. Uh, Luca Magnata wanted to be famous and would do anything to be famous. So he posted a Craigslist ad saying he wanted to make a movie. And the person that responded oh, to yeah, it, yeah. he murdered on camera in a video called One Lunatic, One Ice Pick. I would not encourage anyone to go watch it because it's really disturbing. And that's what he wants is to people to watch it to become famous. And he's like Can- one of Canada's most, you know, famous oh, serial killers. Yeah, he's Canadian, but he literally like live streamed him murdering someone online mm-hmm. to become famous. When was this? Uh, twenty twelve. Wow. Mm-hmm. So right around the same time of this movie. Um, so that's what I took away from. It. I was like, wow, everything Emma Roberts is saying is like what Luca Magnata would say, <laughs> as Mickey would do. Or this is like, yeah, right. This is yeah. uh, so. This is in the zeitgeist. Then is Kevin Williamson capturing another moment? Did he predict that case? I don't know. In I mean, writing, the, you know, just looking around case, him and going, Colin. <clears throat> <laughs> <laughs> now I'm being the old one yelling at people. <laughs> Pause it. The movies to blame. But even, yeah. I like, think so. But even before. before okay, you- Tipper Gore. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Let that be the first and last Tipper Gore uh, reference to make on this podcast. But, like, even if, even before you get to the whole, like, she wants to be famous. I feel like her excuse is so fucking flimsy. She's just like her motivation is so weak. My whole yeah. life it was always about you. It's like that's it. Yeah, everyone's life is that way. If you have a sibling, if you have any, like that's so flimsy. It's so shallow. Mm-hmm. This is the other. That doesn't this is the other part of the making up family members part that bothers me is because you're basing this whole this character's whole motivation on. A character that we know, yeah. but we haven't seen that relationship that you're talking about right yeah, now. Yeah, I haven't seen how troubled your life was. No, I or no how, idea. how they're treating her when you're yeah. in the picture. In the original Scream, we see we see Billy and we see how hurt he is. And that's why mm-hmm. we kind of have, not like a sympathy for him, but we're more affected by that killer. Yeah, We're not affected by her at all. No, I don't see not, what, like, what she has a, a problem with. Like, there's nothing established in any of the other movies that would like give credence to her feelings to me like it doesn't help with her case or why i should yeah somehow she said that you know like nev campbell's character sydney's never around or whatever and so like i barely knew her but whenever she is there she does seem to be like you know supportive and nice to her she's She's really nice yeah Mm -hmm. But that doesn't have anything to do with the psycho's mind, right? Nope. She's just like, what I want is I looked at the fame that you had, and I want the fame, and I can't figure out any other way to get that for myself because, you know, I deserve it too, and the way that I'm going to get it is I'm going to kill you, <laughs> Yeah, and it's going to seem like this ghost face, and I survived the ghost face killings. and There are so many easier ways to become famous. So many. Like That's right, they got yeah. YouTube now. Go, is, well, go on American Idol and be terrible, like yeah. William Hung, and become famous. Play or video games all day. Have, make a sex tape. You know, there's a million different <laughs> ways. There you go. Infamous, a million, famous, sure. A there's, million yeah. easier yeah, ways to become just, famous. It's just so flimsy. It An- really is. I, I think another problem is that, you know how when they do when they do remakes nowadays, I think a lot of the things are, at least my attitude towards them is that, well, we still have the original. That doesn't just go away. Right. Mm-hmm. They're making a new one, and it'll do whatever it does. Well, I can still go back and watch the original yeah. if if I want to. This movie posits that, like, 
within the movie, the new killer wants to replace as a victim wants to replace Sydney. So in getting into their theme of like Jill is like the remake or the new rebooted version of it, mm-hmm. like she's committing a sin and that she wants to get rid of the original. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Instead of just existing and doing that as well, she wants to get rid of the original, which I don't know. I don't, I don't know if that goes anywhere. Yeah, because I'm just thinking if you about kill it. Sydney, the person who survived all this stuff, like doesn't your sympathy go for poor Sydney? Sydney. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, not well. the survivor. Like, well, know. I guess she's the one you have to go to to get the story of what actually That's happened and true. the idea that she survives. Would there be a different thing here if by Scream Four you actually make Sydney the murderer? Because Sydney, at this point, having survived all this stuff, and like toward the end of this movie, the way that she reacts so quickly to the fact that like her own flesh and blood and this girl that she's known apparently her entire life, right, all eighteen apparently, years of it yeah. or whatever. Uh, is suddenly like this completely cold, black-hearted murderer. Uh, Sydney is fairly capable of just like you know killing her and making the wisecracks. At, you know, like yeah, <laughs> right. Like, it's it's, like it's what's that- going on in Sydney's mind? Because I don't know. She's not really there. You know, it's like she's just kind of. I just want to get back to my life, and I keep getting dragged into this shit. Kind of like John McClane, right? She's the John McClane <laughs> yeah. yeah. of slashers. <laughs> So you're saying she's too old for this shit? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, she's, but that's not yeah, right. That's what she's saying. Like, I'm, yeah. I'm too old for this shit. When I was watching this, I was like, man, there's no, no amount of therapy that is going to help her get right. over all no. of this shit. Yeah. Well, that's that's all I could think about. I was like, because, like, when she, especially when you see, um, uh, what's his name? Trevor's, like, when she sees him get shot point blank yeah. and killed, I was like, well, there's no coming back from all of this shit no. she's seen at this point. Yeah. You know? Which is why I always thought a good storyline for Sydney would be her to come to the realization is that because of her existence, this keeps happening. Yeah, right? And, and they touch on that kind of in this, a little, but not, a little, not yes. to her realization. No, not to her realization, slightly. But because of her existence, this is what keeps happening. So for her to come to a point where she's just done, she's like... She did that already. She like moved to the fucking mountains. We well, had no, but that she's just like, she would, like, she gets... I guess low, or she would sacrifice herself so this doesn't happen to the other people anymore. <laughs> I don't want to see that movie. I don't. I, I, I know, right? no, but, I don't but see I, that. no, but I think that's like I don't. We're not going to see any more movies based on this, uh, from what I can tell. But like, I don't know to see like if you were to continue the story, if you're not going to keep doing the same thing, like as a progression of the character, it's got to go somewhere. Yeah. Like if you um. If you had to keep going, that's got to be an avenue you would explore, right? She's got to come to a point. I mean, in this one, it's kind of the opposite. She doesn't want to be the victim anymore and all that. But she's got to, like, if this keeps happening, get to a point where she's like, this is because of, like, it's going to keep happening because I'm alive. Is mm-hmm. that uh, Sydney in space? No. <laughs> she retreats to a, a scientific laboratory on a space station Jesus. so she can be alone. Jesus. No, it's okay. just sad. Sydney kills herself ending. <laughs> I no, no, no. I think she would allow the killer to kill her. <clears throat> she yeah. wouldn't kill herself. No, but, then but she would like allow herself. Ultimate to... loss for her in the grand scheme of things. In the grand, oh, no. She still it's, it's fell the, victim it, to it. It would go, it would be the most tragic. Of endings for yeah, God, I don't that want to character. watch that. Yeah, the right? most no, yeah. tragic. That's the yeah. Alien Three ending. But yeah. that's like I'm like, if you keep going on, like, all right, let's do it. Let's get to that point yeah. because what else are we doing here? Like, yeah, we we're not going to touch our three main characters. They're not going to die. Something's got to. That's happen. the problem. See, that's the problem. Yes. Okay, is aside from all the problems of the cold open that we talked about, but the biggest misstep that this movie makes, in addition to the cold opens, is that like it. Like, Gail gets stabbed in the first act of this movie, and it ends up meaning nothing, yeah. basically. Oh, yeah. She should have died. Like, she should have died in this movie, because yeah. then oh, there would have been stakes. She would have been, been real yeah, stakes. She should have been the Randy of yeah. this. That was, you had yes. to pick one of them. Yeah. The either, yeah. I mean, it could have been Sydney. They yeah. could have killed Sydney, for all I care, right. in the first, you well, know. That's, but that's what I'm saying. Like, we've gotten to this point. I'm just like, let's kill someone. Let's yeah. do it. Just kill Gail. Maybe not. Like yeah. But Gail good, is yeah. the one you can right. kill. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Most she's of, the one But that's also kill. the most predictable. She's annoying predictable, all of us anyway. Let's just... Yeah. Because we can't kill Dewey, because that's just like, oh, not Dewey survived so much, and now he's going to die? I know, but that's yeah. the thing you think about, like, both of those. You know, it's like, I don't want Dewey or, uh, or Gail to die. And I mean, no, I, I guess by extension, but I, like, I want Sydney I want to rise to be the hero, but it just kind of, I don't know. But, I mean, but with... The other side of that is like this: we know they're not going to touch them. 
Yeah. yeah. They're not going to die. And that's the problem. There's so no what's stakes. the fucking, yeah. like, you're killing off the new people that we just met. Like, all right, I don't, I'm not invested in them as much. Yeah. Like, they don't, they have a very limited time to get, like, for me to like them. I didn't and care. Maybe they achieve it. Maybe they don't. I didn't care about anyone's death in this movie. No, I liked Hannah Pen- Penetier, but that was about it. Everyone yeah, else, I liked everyone her, else but... can go fuck off because these characters are not worth like being the people we have to look at to worry about them living or dying. Like I mm-hmm. could give a shit. Yeah, you brought back the three main characters because those are the ones we care about. If we know you're not going to do anything to them, why do I care what you're doing? In why this movie? don't you care about any of the new characters? What's the What's the filmmaker's deficit here? H- H- Hayden Panettiere. Because, because you like her personality. I do. Yeah, okay. But, I mean, as far as these characters are written, I mean, or what is it? What are they're we talking all the, they're about? They're all this so similar, but, like, they're all just so similar because they all love horror movies, and that's all we really know about them. They yeah. kind of converge together. <laughs> yeah. They're like one giant blob yeah. of a character <laughs> yeah. at this point. Yeah. It's like, all right, you all like the same things. Mm-hmm. You can't all like the same things. Mm-hmm. They all like the same things. can't differentiate things, you. But they've never talked about it to each other before, apparently, because you get that whole scene of Rory Culkin, like, quizzing Hayden yeah. Penetier, and he's, like, shocked that she knows this. I was like, but everyone in your town knows all this. Yeah, yeah. everyone yeah. else knows yeah. this. Yeah. You guys don't know this? Yeah. Yeah. Like, what do you fucking do in high school? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Apparently they're in that big of a high school that they've I never run into each other before not, and really. never had this or conversation. they've been playing this cat and mouse game with, like, will they, won't they for four years. Yeah. And, like, and allegedly this whole town loves horror movies, but their little, like, film club is, like, unpopular. Filled with the main characters of the movie? But the stab um, barn party was, like, over yeah. 100 people, probably. No there was a lot of people at that stab party. No well, they just want to go there and drink and celebrate people getting yeah. murdered. But yeah. all those people, they show a close-up of the crowd, and everyone's reciting every word of the movie. Yeah. Yeah. They're dressed as, like, Dewey. Yeah. 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 They're dressed as, like, st- I know yeah. they're wearing bomber jackets because they're part of the school, but yeah. they're, let's, like, dressed as Steve from the first one who's mm-hmm. in his fucking mm-hmm. jacket. Yeah. yeah. So, in theory, like, shouldn't this entire town be in film club? I mean, yeah. basically. But the whole that's town the is a film club. But if they were, that's the problem, that they're all in film club. I know. Like, it's... everyone loves film. I know. God damn it. <laughs> they don't spend the time. There's, there's no moments. There's no, it's all surface level for these they're characters. They're all the same they character. They're all the same character. They all they're love all movies. They're all the same character. They're all in on the thing. They're all smart to it. They're all hip. But beyond that, I mean, there's really nothing. I mean, I guess maybe that's the thing. Like a good casting agent, you know, or whatever. Casting Hayden Panettiere. Panettiere? Panettiere. 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 In this movie, she has like a force of life, you know, to her that I, well, and she has screen time. Yeah, that's very true. You know, Mm -hmm. more so than some of the other people who are victims who are just basically annoying or vapid or, you know, self-centered or self-absorbed or, you know, whatever, that they don't see what's going on around them and just are supposed to be, you know, grist for the mill at that point. I (laughs) I felt like every girl in this movie was just a vehicle for Trevor to call. Yeah, pretty much. Like, that's it. That's all they did. Yeah. So much calling in this movie. I so, liked yeah. it better when we just had fucking flip phones. So much. God did, damn it. Did you guys feel like the the venom between um, Courtney Cox and David Arquette was like, hey, you're real. bringing your personal stuff on to the... It was a little too real. You're, you're like, bringing right, your personal down, stuff to work everybody. with you. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. Great, a little, they were going a through a divorce at the time. Yeah. Yeah. This movie yeah. And then even, like, there was the one point when um, Alison Brie made the comment about the characters, like, it paralleled to their characters in the movie... I'm like, this is like fucking Inception. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Like it I was said, a it little gets, too. It folds in on itself. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It too many little, times. A too, little too on the too spot. Much, too many times. Well, what so they, what's what they say in Inception yeah. is yeah. if you go too deep, you won't, you can't get out, yeah, right? Yeah. That's where Kevin Williams and Wes That's where he lives now. He's just like, everyone loves horror movies. He fell asleep on a plane and got Incepted and never woke up. And then Kevin Williamson went crazy and now he's just off doing shit. His top is still spinning. Yeah. Still going. God damn it. That's the other. Wait, uh, somebody mentioned Deputy Judy, the other character. I don't oh yeah, she's oh, yeah. Marley Shelton. Yeah. Character, yeah, you make a purposely creepy, she's a crazy eyes. Yeah, a purposely a googly crazy eyes. Character. Yeah, yeah, because you got to have the red herring. Googly eyes. Ah, they're trying so. They're trying too hard mm-hmm. in this movie. I will, they're trying too hard in this. movie. I will say that scene when she's like in the stairwell and it's like all shadowed. That was kind of creepy. What was the point of that though? But it's so to throw no, yeah, yeah. suspicion on it. It's her. so like we're gonna throw suspicion on this character. No, I'm. It didn't work. At all. I'm just saying, like in in of itself, it was kind of creepy. I'll I thought it, that. I, I thought like uh, okay, maybe I'm just watching this whole movie from like Sydney's perspective. But if I'm someone who's been through all this traumatic shit and like a cop is like creeping around my house like that, I'm like, what the fuck is wrong with you? Don't you know that yeah. like I'm sensitive to this type of 
behavior and yeah. you're doing it. Like, right. yeah. like hey, hey, come like, here. I can't see you. Yeah. Come here. Yeah. <laughs> well, she's Fucking not creepy. doing that because Sydney, when you look at her face, she's like, oh, she could be. Right. But she's, she's, sus- be. she's suspect of everyone. Yeah, yeah. I know, yeah. But she jumped when she came around that corner, though. First, when she saw her, she like jumped and gasped. And yeah. like, that cop is yeah. still just doing her, like hanging Sorry, out in the shadows I didn't still. didn't mean to scare you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Jesus Christ. Just making my rounds. Yeah. <laughs> Remember when we went to school together? <laughs> me neither. Yeah. yeah. Oh man, it, man, I I gotta say, if 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 Adam Brody and Anthony Anderson were watching my house, I would not feel safe. No. Not at all. What happened? Do they have not have any cops who've been around for a while? Like these guys, fresh out of whatever job they failed at before, they came to the fucking sheriff's office. Like, can we be cops? Is that cool? Yeah. Like, that's what it felt like for those mm-hmm. two. Yeah. What the fucking bad. I, I don't buy Adam Brody being a cop in any universe. No! <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no. Just, no. Nope. Well, do we have any other final stray observations? Yeah, about, a pivotal uh, moment in this movie <laughs> is when they see the killer in a fucking wind chime. And that's all I have to say about this movie. <laughs> Jesus. The wind chime. Fucking you, wind chime killer. Did, did the, knife, the knives look any different to you guys this time around? Like, they look bigger. They're all CGI. Oh yeah, Get they're all the CGI fuck. on this one. Oh, At least the like, handles are real, but the blades are all CGI. Yeah. I'm, I'm sure, like, there's props on set, but like for stabbing and I guess yeah, yeah the handles are minutia. real. Yeah. But um, Wes Craven said that like before they had used like cardboard or rubber, but like you can see it see it like flailing yeah, on the those, film. So he didn't want that. So it was literally just the handle. Because God the forbid blade we was... have something that's there. I know. Yeah. yeah, the blood is also a lot Wes Craven, faker in this movie. Yeah, mm-hmm. I remember like a story. I think Alex Aja told about him like when they were going to make uh, uh, the Hills Have Eyes remake. You know, it's like Wes Craven made some fucking hardcore goddamn movies back in the early. I mean, you go look at Last House on the Left. That's and rough. Were, yeah, it is rough. But by the time the, the remake of Hills Have Eyes came around, Alex Aja was like, you know, they were talking about the scene where they had to have the bird in the cage and, you know, whatever. And I think they were trying to do something else that was maybe involving like a cat in a microwave or something. And Wes Craven was like, you know, no, I don't want to I don't want to do this. Mm-hmm. And Aja was like, well, why not? You know, it's like you made these other movies. And he's like, because well, some kid could see this and do it mm-hmm. or somebody could see it and do it like his his whole what a, what a outlook shift. on the world yeah. had been changed by the feedback that he got from yeah. people. Like he, yeah. I think he was afraid of the people who liked his movies. Oh, he was. There's a story. <laughs> if you watch the the Nightmare on Elm Street documentary, Never Sleep Again, he talks about how he was out in public somewhere after he had done Last House on the Left, and he didn't want to do any more horror movies. And he met some kid, and he was just like. So the kid said something to him about how much he loved Last House on the Left, and he was like, "This is really fucked up because this kid is too young to have seen it." Mm. And but he said the kid said something to him to make him want to return to horror movies, and so that's why he did Nightmare on Elm Street. So like he kind of had that kind of relationship with the horror fans, like he appreciated their love, but at the yeah. same time, like he was a little creeped out by their love them, at yeah. the same time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. He's like, I just think about and create this stuff. Mm-hmm. People seem to like it mm-hmm. a little too much. Yeah, yeah he's yeah. getting it out of him and right. releasing it. And They're yeah. taking it in. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. That's what, and then he made a movie about that that was uh, a yep. uh, new nightmare but. yeah mm-hmm. yeah exactly yep a classic mm-hmm. a All better right. movie for a better time in Wes Craven's career yeah well should we uh so Woo! we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna answer some uh listener mail but first I want to let you know okay now that we've talked scream out you probably think you know how this is gonna go and which one of us <laughs> is gonna I mean. recommend or not recommend scream for us. But you got to stick around, folks, for our final wrap-ups, and that's coming after our mail segment. But first, we're going to summon our mailman, Igor. So, Igor, bring us the mail. Masters, masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising, rising. Why, thank you, Igor. He's wearing a ghost face mask tonight just for this. At least he tried. There you go. Yeah. He's, he's wearing a he's wearing a ripper uh, mask. <laughs> uh, how can they get a hold of us on uh, Facebook? Facebook dot com slash Saturday Night Freak Show on Twitter at Sat Freak Show by email Saturday Night Freak Show at Yahoo dot com on Instagram. Oh, that's me. That's Saturday Night Freak Show. <laughs> Tell me funny about. <laughs> I try. Since I you know, blew the other one. So uh, screen, uh, about Scream 4, Chris Huddleston writes in. See hoods. And he says he didn't enjoy 3 very much upon its initial release, but he, it has grown on him Thank over you. time. He says 4 is pretty good, but it's the weakest in the series, in his opinion. It's pretty good? 
No, he said, yeah, it's pretty good, but it's the weakest in the series. Uh, Jonathan Holt writes in. Jonathan says, I was always a huge fan of the original trilogy, but four just didn't do it for me. The killer twist was also the weakest of the franchise. You guys, however, are awesome. Thanks. Oh, thanks. Oh, thanks. Thank you, Jonathan. Uh, Jacob Kotner writes in and says, Scream 4 is the second best one, in my opinion. Ooh. Scream 3 is bad, but not, it's not as dull as Scream 2, which has aged the worst. <gasps> I'd rather... What? Just- Jesus. He says, I'd rather just watch the original again. Well, Jesus. well, I mean, yeah. Yeah, watch but, the original, but geez. I mean, always watch what? the original, but Jesus. Uh, MFL writes in and says, Scream 4 is better than Scream 3. The only difference between three Scream 3 and a bucket of manure is the bucket. <laughs> just going to let that one <laughs> hang out I there for a minute. <laughs> Uh, I'm going I'm to say that that one caught you off guard. That's why you found it so funny. Sean feels personally attacked by those mail right now. Give it, a, give, it a, uh, give it a rewatch. Joey Adams says, I love the movies, all of them. Part two is my favorite. Yes. I tried watching the MTV series, but only made it through two episodes. Oh, yeah. I couldn't it's, get it behind it at all. It's yeah, not we didn't the talk same. About oh, yeah, we didn't talk about that at all. I've watched like maybe three episodes. It's just, it's not the same. I watched the, the whole same. first season. Really? There's another season. I didn't watch that. You failed to watch, (laughs) apparently. They're going back to the costume, Colin. Yeah, I heard. Yeah, because it looks like a blowjob face otherwise. It does. It's It's the Brandon James blowjob face (laughs) of the Scream series, which is the big reason I didn't watch. I'm just like, what the fuck do I care? It's not Scream. It's a bunch of kids getting killed, which is fine, but it's not Scream. But it's trying to do the, like, you know, how you do a horror movie as a TV series. I guess. It's meta. But. The costume's coming back for season three, and okay, also maybe I'll return to it then. Right, but it's also an anthology now, where you don't have to have watched the first two seasons to enjoy the third one. Okay, so well, I'm yes, all I will in give, for this new series. I will give the third season a shot. Then. As yeah. will I. No, nope, I have no. It's on interest. MTV. I'm just saying. Okay, so have you seen the uh, blowjob mask, Ali? Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay, it's like a hot, it's a cross between the scream <laughs> mask <laughs> and exactly what it looks mask. like. Exactly what it is. It's exactly what it looks like. <laughs> uh-huh. All right, well, while put, Michaela yeah. is looking that up, uh, about <laughs> We're our, not exaggerating about no, the blowjob face. <laughs> about our episode, Urban Legend, uh, Zemer27 writes in and says, that's a fun episode. Oh, I have fond memories of seeing this in theaters, laughing at, lot, laughing at lots and angry about the dog. Uh, I'm a big fan from Illinois, yep. by the way, and oh, you are hi. all great. Thanks. Hey. Oh, I appreciate hey. it. Yay. Thanks, sir. Awesome. Thanks. Is that Zemer? That's Zemer27. Zemer, Zemer, thank you, Zemer. Zemer? And uh, Zima's writing to us. No, that's that's like a southern. Sponsor me. Can you uh, get me another Zima? (laughs) Take another Zima out of there, out of that cooler. Well, C. Huds has also written it about Urban Legend. When on that episode, I think we were talking about the difference between '80s movies and '90s uh, slasher uh, Mm -hmm. revisits, remakes. And he says, I think the '80s was the last decade when movies weren't as calculated. You had the extension of the '70s when a bunch of young hippies moved movies away from the studio system. It was filmmakers fueled by cocaine who were doing all kinds of crazy things, and sometimes it worked. Sure, there were tons of sequels and some remakes too, but it didn't feel like every movie was a focus group tested cash grab. And uh, I don't mean to sound for this too, or I don't mean for this to sound too get off my lawn because there are plenty of good films I mean, today. They just don't don't always play wide. I think he's got a good point. I no, think I think so too. too. I, I think, think that's And really don't worry about point. it. I was very much a get off my lawn guy tonight. We've all had get off our lawn moments for sure. sure, yeah. No, I agree. I think he put he that was very well put. But I, I mean Kevin that, Williamson yeah. was a get off my lawn guy writing this movie. Yeah. So, just saying. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone has their get off my yeah. lawn moments you know that was a really good point yeah i think so i I think that i mean i think that's what we were trying to say but he said it better yeah (laughs) basically yeah Yeah, you said it in in the mailbag what we were trying to say for an hour yeah so bravo to you sir he's sitting there typing he's like you fucking idiots like you guys Uh, this is like well we have had many drinks by the time that's that's very true it's all a bit cloudy and now we have to try and sum up what we think about this movie what will i say are you ready I'm ready. <laughs> okay. I've been ready for Actually, it's me. I'm going to go Colin. first. Colin. <laughs> I was waiting for Sean to do something I know, there. but he wasn't going to do it. It didn't feel like the regular intro to me calling on you. Colin! <laughs> yes, Sean? What did you think of Scream 4? All right, well, listener, and let me put you in the headspace I was in going into this movie. I saw Scream 4 in 2011. I remember... 
uh, my experience of watching it, right? You kind of file that away, and then you move forward. And then since then, I remember seeing it in the theater being disappointed. Yep. Uh, and then I think the last Scream movie that I saw was Scream 2, and Sean brought it to the freak show. So I haven't been, you know, in Ooh, the Scream. I smell a revisit. Yeah, so I watched this movie tonight, fully expecting to hate it, and I didn't. Okay, so oh! now let's now let's uh, now I got to break this down because okay, yeah. as it was going as it was starting, and for the first I don't know how long, maybe half of the movie, I was sitting there going like, "Well, this is better than Urban Legend." Like I thought it was significantly better than Urban Legend, and I think maybe it's that context I feel that like I'm it's watching. Shit on it in. Sean and his love of Scream <laughs> Free, Urban Legend. <laughs> I really, right. di- I, I really I, disliked. I recommended Urban Legend that's last week. Yeah, that's right. right. But unfortunately, I, I really disliked it. The the problems <laughs> I had with that movie, this movie didn't have, and I think it's because you know maybe it was the Wes Craven, Kevin Williamson, you know, like oh, there's actually some stuff going on here that you know, uh, the the characters themselves. Uh, I think there's a lot of you know when you get into this kind of thing, it's trying to outguess the. Uh, or keep the audience befuddled. So it has a lot of characters, a lot of moving parts. Uh, you know, everybody's circling around each other. It's like, who, who's, who's going to be the killer, you know, by the end of this? We know how Scream goes. It's going to be, you know, two people probably. That didn't feel Which like a clusterfuck these... to you? No, no, like... I think it... Um... Did it feel like a clusterfuck? Like just, the, just, just. But it ends up being like let's let's try and keep them guessing. But there's like you can go too far. Well, that's what I'm saying. Keep yeah, them guessing. but that that oh, is I'll what I'm up. saying. I'm the sorry. first the first half of the movie, I think that was kind of where I was at. I mean, I wasn't completely disconnected from it to the point that you guys were. Where, you know, I was like, oh, look at look at look at look at what she's wearing. That house, like that's a nice. That lawn you know. is well kept, right? It was. Did you see those roses? <laughs> that's very true. She did drop into some roses. Beautiful. Uh-huh. Those are pretty. Don't Gorgeous. worry. That that does happen to me a lot in movies that I watch. So I. That's usually understand. when sarcastic Colin comes but out. But that's what I'm saying. I was surprised. I was shocked that uh, that it didn't happen to me tonight. I was actually sitting there listening to what they were saying. And then as it started kicking into the second half of the movie and, you know, most of your extraneous cast is gone and it's moving towards this thing with Emma Roberts and I'm watching Emma Roberts and like, I'm like, this is, it's just fascinating because my reaction to her was different than it was the first time. I still disliked the character. Obviously she's the villain, right? But I gained an appreciation for, I think I heard Kevin Williamson this time. The first time I didn't, the first time I just fucking hated her. (laughs) I hated everything about her. I was like, fuck this person. It's like, she's just so like shallow and mean and cruel. And now it's like, Oh, Kevin Williamson, you're using her as an avatar to, you know, so and then she's actually pulling it off pretty well. It's like I thought she, you know, wasn't as uh, as bad as I thought she was the first time around. So based on that, would I recommend Scream Four? That's the question you're asking. Mm-hmm. I still don't think that. Uh, I think I like uh, I like Scream. I was you know. ranking. Yeah, I, well, I go Scream. I would put Scream above Scream Two, even though Scream Two I think has my favorite sequences from the entire series are in them. But overall, I think Scream works better as a movie uh, because it's the first, you know, one at bat. Uh, Scream Two, then probably Scream Four. Um, well, well above Scream Three, a movie that feels wow, like that was aimed at me. It was uh, yes, it was. Jesus. Was, was put together <laughs> as it was being filmed. I mean, that I think was the problem with the, the the third movie. It felt like the the steamroller effect of the popularity of these movies, like was going further past where they were actually trying to make the movie to catch up. And it felt like, you know, they just were cobbling it together at the last fucking minute. And it doesn't make any goddamn sense. So Scream 4 out is number three in the series. Uh, I guess take that as you will. Is that a recommendation? I don't know. Oh, you got you have to tell us whether you yeah, do or yeah. not before we move on here. I might. Yeah, if you like the Scream films, I mean, it's... I like this better than Valentine or Urban Legend or, it's you know, like uh, disturbing whole. behavior of this generation. That's not even those. That's movies. a different generation. Yeah, it's a different generation. You just named okay, I like movies. it better than Prom Night. I like it better than 
Terror Train. Do they do tra- Terror Train? No, it's just called Train. Do- uh, uh, yeah. Black yeah. Christmas. I'd recommend this over Black Christmas. I'm going to go say, yeah, I, I guess this is an okay slasher movie. Holly, what did you think? Um, yeah, I hated it. I was bored out of my mind. Um, I don't really have anything good to say about it. I definitely don't recommend it. I like one, two, three, and then four. That's it. There you go. <laughs> Simple <laughs> enough. Oh, oh, Scream 4. How you tried so hard and failed so miserably. In my eyes, as it were. Um, I think... I mean, I've stated my problems with this movie. I don't... The fact that it is... Um, it's The made-up family member aspect of this kind of negates... It negates all her motivations and actions for me. Like, because they just made her up to have her be in this movie, because they made up the family member to make it more personal for Sydney in this movie. They're just... It feels like they're trying to punish Sydney at this point in this movie. And I don't like that. Like, she, even her character is trying to move beyond that, and they just... They're, they're inventing stuff to, like, keep going after her. This is the fourth time she's been through this shit. So I don't appreciate that they're just inventing characters to do this to her. It doesn't feel like a I'm natural... I'm sorry, I just totally got a vision of you doing the leave Britney alone thing. <laughs> just <laughs> trying to get a, like a curtain leave behind me. Leave Sydney alone! Leave Sydney alone! Why are you doing this to her? <laughs> do I need to put on mascara? Yeah. And dripping down and everything? <laughs> but it really does. It feels like they're just trying to like... At this point, it's... I uh, Let me say that I never wanted this movie. Like I was yeah, like that's the thing nobody did. Right? I don't think anybody nobody wanted did. this movie. Like I was perfectly fine. One, two, three. Yeah. It's done. I didn't need to see these characters again. Like there, if, to me, it felt like you know what? Whatever you may think of Scream Three, like it ended. It ended it, and it was done. And it was good. And like if maybe if nobody else felt a closure to the series, Sydney felt a closure to it. Like just based on that last scene she had in that movie, she was good. She felt a closure. And that was it. To bring it back and to do this to her all over again, it feels like we're just like punching Sydney in the face. Like we're not being kind to these characters, in in that we kept bringing them back for this. Um, I've always thought about like where the series would go on uh, from this movie, from Scream Four. But to tell you the truth, I don't want it to. Like we're good, we're done. Like we can stop doing this. I don't need to see these characters go through more shit. I was very happy where they left off. Um, and to continue doing it in this movie, like, y- you're doing things with the characters that I love, because I love this series. You're making, it felt like you're making Dewey less than what he was in the other movies, say what you will about him, but um, it feels like he's kind of, he's really dumb in this movie. They cheapened his character. They, they, they feel like they cheapened yeah. his character, the relation, like, it. once you get to a high point with the characters, I guess the only and, and I'm saying that about Scream 3, but it is like we get to a good place with those characters. Sydney feels good. Dewey and Gail are like engaged to be married. Their relationship is better at that point. To continue on from that, which we get in Scream 4, like Sydney's getting punished. Dewey and Gail are just like arguing and having problems and doing all that. Like, yeah, but D- Gail does actually get to have that, you know, like she feels more alive when she's actually very you know, true. She's like the dog with the bone. Once she's got something, she's to got chase, right. She got something to focus yeah, on. She's yeah. Like, yeah. But, but that's, that is a thing made up in this movie. You know what I mean? That she needs something to focus on in order to be, in order to feel like she's doing something and everything. That's uh, uh, entirely created by this movie. She was good in the other ones. Like she, she obviously, as Gail Weathers needs that, because she loves exploring that stuff and she loves that story and everything. But it didn't feel like there was a desperation to her character in those other movies. I don't think mm. that that we get in this movie. Like I think we just went down a peg in this movie for these characters, which you know. Uh, and considering that I don't think we're gonna make any more screams after this, like that's where we leave these characters. Like we don't get more movies for them to go like back up. Mm-hmm. which is where I like to see these characters. And I think we left off in a good place, and I think Scream 4 just kind of tarnishes everybody involved with it. You leave Dewey getting beat the... With a bedpan. Beat like, up it's with a also, bedpan, It's yeah. also just a really goofy movie, and like I said, say what you want about Scream 3, and it's a very, like, Scooby-Doo, and there's goofiness to it as well, but this just doesn't feel like... I don't know, it doesn't feel like these characters deserve this movie. Um... 
I don't recommend it. I as I have major problems with it. Mm-hmm. Um, this bright spots. Hayden Panettiere is, I think, pretty good in this movie. Um, but I don't know. Everything else just kind of falls. Doesn't do as good for me in this movie. So I don't recommend Scream Four. Um, I hope I don't have to watch this movie again. <laughs> Ever. <laughs> I, I, I really don't. Yeah. Like, watching it tonight, like, reaffirm, just like, <laughs> nope, I'm good. I don't, I don't need it. I'm happy with, like, the three movies I got. Like, of varying degrees of quality, I like them. Uh, it's two, one, three, four for me. Don't watch Scream 4. When you talked about earlier, um, the, like, going around um, was kind of like, to see how long they could take the who done it, you know, to try to figure out who it was. How 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 quickly did you figure out who did it? Because I knew pretty early on. Oh yeah, it was on my first guess. No, on no my idea. First year, I had no, no idea. idea. This one, I guessed it like right away. Because there's a fake out scene always... where there's some, you know, there's two killers. I guess going yeah. into these, so our other killer is with a. With somebody, while well, somebody they're watching somebody else get killed. Yeah, yeah. that's the that scene that's like, well, right, can't be her. Right, that's always mm-hmm. one that just kind of like, well, it's probably not her. Um, I don't know. I can't. I'm not going to say I was smarter than this movie and that that I guessed it before it happened. Um, probably because I was maybe it was while I was watching it, I was hoping they wouldn't go there. But uh, <laughs> I don't think I I don't think I knew who it was going to be by the time we got yeah. to it. No, <laughs> I, because again, this was like what was this? Um, uh, 11 years after yeah, the other one. I'm just mm-hmm. like, they could do, I mean, they really could do anything at this point. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So no, I didn't, I don't think I guessed it before that. Hmm. Okay. It's in, it's interesting, Sean, that you use the word tarnished in, in reference to this movie, because there is a point in this movie where Alison Brie says to Courtney Cox, like, how would you salvage your tarnished brand? <laughs> Which is like <laughs> the most meta that's, thing. That's they have Kevin Williamson dialogue movie. right yeah. there. Yeah. 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 Huh. Um, so I came to the Scream franchise really late in life. I didn't see any of the movies till I was 21 years old. Damn. Good. Uh, God. Wait, did wow. you see Sylvester Stallone movies before you saw Scream? Guaranteed she did. Okay. It was about the same time. About the same time. No um, what a discovery. I wasn't what a year. <laughs> so, I discovered Sylvester Stallone and Scream in the same year. Uh, my mom was one of those moms where if she heard something really popular in the news, I wasn't allowed to watch it. Uh, and so when Scream came out, it was obviously a huge thing, and so I wasn't allowed to watch it. And I actually went to a summer camp where I saw the cold open with, um, you, you know, the cold open of Scream with Drew Barrymore getting killed oh, yeah. And, yeah. and Stu getting killed. And, like, I wasn't, uh, like, that traumatized me, so uh, that I wasn't allowed to watch them. So I saw them. <laughs> When I was 21, and the reason I, and when I was 21 was when Scream 4 came out, and the reason why I saw them was because the guy I was dating at the time really wanted to go to see Scream 4 in theaters, and I had not seen any of the movies. So oh, wow. in 12 hours, I digested the entire Scream franchise. I watched nice. all three of them, and then went and saw Scream 4 at 9 a.m. in the morning in the theater. That's, that's <laughs> like, if you were to describe the worst situations in, wa- in which to watch the series, that's it. I digested them all, and then went and saw the fourth one at 9 a.m. Yeah. That's like, oh, wow. Yeah. You should hate these movies. Movies. But when I but it, I really liked Scream Four when I initially saw it because I liked it a lot. Um, and then I had not seen it since up until like three or four weeks ago. I watched it for Halloween again. and I was mm. like, ah, oh, not as good as I remember. And then I was like, oh man. The more I started thinking, I was like, oh, there's some problems with this movie. But um, the older I get, the more I really like Sidney Prescott, and the more I really like just feel the need to like put this protective bubble around Nev Campbell mm-hmm. and just like want to keep her precious forever. Like between <laughs> you're just like oh baby, <laughs> yeah, oh no, yeah. Between Scream fine. and the Craft, I'm just yeah. like she's perfect. Like she, she can do perfect. no wrong. I know. So like any chance I get to watch her on screen more in a horror movie is a win for me. Uh, obviously, you know, this whole episode has been us just like airing our grievances and our problems with this movie, and it definitely has a lot of problems, but I still find it to be a fun watch and a good hangover movie. I, I, for me, the franchise goes one, two, four, three, uh, same as Colin. Mm-hmm. I think I, I, yeah. the third one, I don't ever see myself revisiting unless Sean makes me. <laughs> you guys are really, really threatening that. Just saying. It'll um, probably be a year, but get to it. Yeah, no, I think that, yeah, Hayden Panettiere is definitely a bright spot. Emma Roberts is horribly miscast. Um, And I think, honestly, that would really help this movie if you just had someone as strong as Nev Campbell cast as her cousin. Like, that's where the huge mismatch comes from with me is that those two on screen together, like, there's literally a part where, like, Holly and I were like, how dare you at the screen when, like, (laughs) after Emma Roberts, like, fakes the whole, like, her being assaulted and then, like, lays down to a literal mirror image of Nev Campbell across from her, like, almost touching her. 
And we were like, no, don't you fucking do that. You don't are, you dare. You are not her. Like, just, don't you just, bleed near her. Yeah. <laughs> and um, that to me was like, no, there's th- there's no coming back from that. Um, so it definitely has its problems, but I think I think Scream 3 is not as good as this one. So I would recommend Scream 4. I'm with you, man. I put three before this. You people. <laughs> <laughs> you people. <clears throat> well, all it's right. fun. It's a Scooby. It's an episode of Scooby Doo. You should go back and revisit it. That's not what I want from Scream. I don't want Scooby Doo. But it's fun though. <laughs> no, what I want from Scream, I got in one and two. Yeah, That's exactly. Right. I, yeah, I agree. Probably there's, there. there's probably not a reason for, to be honest with you, anything beyond Scream. Why do we have to make fucking sequels? That's true, and everything. Yeah. It's like that story yeah. is done at yeah. the end of the first. It was perfected. Movie. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Uh, so uh, next week uh, we hope you join us. We're going to watch a movie that's chosen Colin! by. <laughs> They're just going to get louder and more annoying <laughs> as we go on. <laughs> what are we watching next? Oh, week? you want to know what we're watching I next do. week? That's All right, we're going to go a hundred percent into schlock. This just oh, came no. out on Blu-ray. We're not going to watch a Blu-ray. Uh, it's, <laughs> it's William Shatner. Oh. It's John Travolta. <gasps> Ernest Borgnine. And Tom Skerritt in The Devil's Ray. Oh my God, we're having a good time. Oh. And it's got uh, Anton LaVey, the high priest of the Church oh, of Satan, who right. is the technical Snap. advisor on this movie. Okay, wow. I'm, all d- I'm down for this. I'm in. Yeah, this, this sounds, sounds good. incredible. I'm so yeah. in. Sounds yeah. good. With the most shocking climax of any oh. motion picture ever. So what said year? the ads. I mean, John Travolta, I'm sold. So, I'm in. Well, <laughs> what year is this? He's not really in it at all, but he's in the ads for it, which is Larry, uh, 75. Oh, so geez, before, wow. before Star Trek, the motion wow. picture. Yeah. yeah. All right. Damn. So that's next I'm week. intrigued. On yeah. the Saturday Night Freak Show. We hope you listen. And until then, ladies and germs, the basement is going dark.